Welcome to Raiment for the Liturgy, Vestments from the Kent State University Museum Collection. I'm Jean Drusado, the director of the Kent State University Museum. Vestments in liturgy have two functions. The first is to differentiate the participants, the priest from the deacon from the bishop, and the second is to add to the splendor of the rite being celebrated. The vestments in the museum collection come from three places. The first is the initial gift from Shannon Rogers and Jerry Silverman, the second, the Fulton Lucian collection, and lastly, the collection that was transferred from the Allen Memorial Art Museum at Oberlin College in Oberlin, Ohio. These particular vestments were used in the Roman Catholic liturgy. They are primarily collected for their textile value because they're made of sumptuous silks embroidered with silk and metal threads, precious gold and precious silver. I'd like to take you through some of the different vestments that we have here and explain a little bit about their origins. The vestments in this exhibition originated from the secular dress of late antique Mediterranean cultures, and they developed through the centuries for use in the Roman Catholic Church. The Anglican Church and some Protestant churches also have adapted elements of vesture in their religious practice. This drawing shows the medieval use of vestments in England in the 14th century. Here you see the priest wearing an early version of the chasuble with Y-shaped orphrey bands decorating the front. The majority of vestments in the exhibition are chasubles, although each would most likely have been a part of a larger set of matching pieces, including dalmatics and copes. The chasuble worn over the stolen alb changed shape over the centuries, as you can see in this diagram. Originally, it was a circular, secular garment with an opening for the head, worn by travelers and peasants and called a penula in ancient Rome. Gradually, the shape changed to the fiddle shape you see in the exhibition. The changes gave those celebrating the Mass the ability to move more easily, with much less fabric around their arms. On the fronts of all the chasubles, there is evidence of wear where the priest needed to use his arms to perform the ritual. Here you can see the difference in the wear on the front and on the back. The church decreed that chasubles be made of silk, the most expensive and precious of all textiles, because the bishops and priests celebrating the Mass should wear only the finest materials. This explains why the chasubles in the exhibition are made of luxurious woven silks, brocaded and embroidered in gold, silver, and colorful threads. These vestments were usually seen only in the dim light of the sanctuary, so the gold and silver would have sparkled and the silk would have shone in the candlelight or the sunlight streaming through the windows. These two chasubles illustrate the common practice of giving valuable but out-of-date garments to the church to be repurposed as vestments. For example, when the Empress Maria Theresa of Austria gave her official garments to the church, the double-headed Habsburg eagles were covered over with embroidered pomegranates or other religious symbols when the fabrics were reused as vestments. Both of these chasubles were made of fabrics originally intended for dresses. This textile is called a gros de tour, which indicates a heavy ribbed fabric. It would have been woven in France between 1730 and 1735 and used as a dress fabric. The T-shaped garments in the exhibition are dalmatics. During the liturgy, the dalmatic is worn over the stolen alb by bishops, deacons, and subdeacons. In ancient Rome, a similar garment was worn over the tunica and under the toga. The ancient dalmatic had vertical bands called clavi that decorated the front. In the liturgical garment, the clavi have been replaced with orphreys from shoulder to hem. Decorative elements on the dalmatic sleeves and the front and back hems are called apparels.
An example of a late 18th century textile used for a dalmatic is this fabric, woven about 1780. The fabric used for the apparels was woven earlier in the century. Both textiles would have been originally for dress fabrics. Because of the traditional shape of vestments, the only dating comes from the textiles used to make them. The semicircular garment in the exhibition is called a cope. It's worn by priests and bishops. The cope evolved from the hooded cape worn for centuries by people to protect from the elements. It was established as a liturgical vestment by the 13th century. The vestigial hood of the ancient secular garment remains as a decorative but non-functional element on the back. The cope also has orphreys formed by a band on the straight edge. It is traditionally fastened with a morse, a tab attached at the center front. The cope in the exhibition may have been cut down for use on an altar figure. The six frames that you see on the walls contain hand-colored engravings commemorating a Corpus Christi procession. It took place in Rome in 1838 with Pope Gregory XVI as the celebrant. The first plate shows the people being chased out of the way as the cross-bearer and candle-bearers pass by at the head of the procession. They're followed by members of the religious confraternities and the various religious orders, who are followed by the clergy. In this frame, you can see the Pope under the canopy with the Eucharist. The order of the procession is established by tradition. The feast itself dates back to the 13th century. The large oil painting in the exhibition is by an unknown Flemish artist and was probably painted in the first quarter of the 17th century. Although large in its present form, it appears to have been cut down. Paintings with the subject of the adoration were very popular. And this one follows the typical program of symbolism, with the wise men from Europe, Asia, and Africa representing the worldwide church. The figures of Mary holding the Christ child represent the Eucharist. Mary holds the child in a cloth without touching him, just as the priest holds the sacrament. These vestments were made of textiles that represent the marvelous textile arts of the 17th, 18th, and 19th centuries. They added a great deal to both the splendor and the mystery of the rituals of the church. And Lord.